The death of a child at any age is the most painful experience a family can have. The grief it carries is a process that can be managed, but it isn't something you ever really get over. Grieving parents can find solace in understanding what we know about their children's lives in the afterlife. Communications from people now living in the afterlife have told us a lot about how our children are enjoying their lives there. In this video, I explain what we know happens with children who have graduated into their next life. Hello, I'm Dr. R. Craig Hogan, president of the Afterlife Research and Education Institute and Seek Reality Online. The loss of a child at any age causes agonizing pain, but it is important to understand that every new arrival in the afterlife is cherished and loved. Even if your child has committed crimes or has died due to a drug overdose or a suicide, there is no judgment by anyone. There is no blame or condemnation. Because the baggage of the earth life and the body are gone, they adjust quickly and all dysfunctions and addictions dissolve. Every child of every age is perfectly loved. No matter how their lives went here, they are eternal beings who receive all the love and understanding and nurturance that their parents here devoutly wish that they were still able to give to them. We have many thousands of communications about what happens to children in the afterlife. Everything we present comes from verified communications coming from people living in the afterlife through a variety of sources. None come from a religion, a guru, or our intuitions. Here's what we know based on the communications we have received. For the transition of young people at the end of their life here, there are loving people in spirit who are given the special duty of managing childhood transitions from Earth. They take special care to make certain that children who are about to leave their bodies are as comfortable as possible. If the child is moving on after an illness, a beloved grandma or Aunt Jane or Brother Billy who had transitioned before the child might come to the child's bedside and playfully lure the child away. If a pet is already in the afterlife, that pet might be at the child's bedside. And all of these are unseen by the people around the bed, but the child sees them. All measures are taken to make the moment of freedom from the body a comfortable time for a child and to urge the child to leave the deathbed scene and the mourners quickly and playfully. Children who transition suddenly during or soon after an accident or health trauma feel no pain at the transition. All pain is gone as soon as the child is no longer responsive and will not awaken. The child is in the afterlife before the body dies when the child is in an unconscious state and will not revive. Any apparent pain is in the body, not in the child. They have already gone on. If a child of any age transition as, as a result of a suicide, a drug overdose, or other such cause at the end of their life, they're met with great sympathy and love. There is no judgment or condemnation. Since the mental and physical causes of their transition, such as addiction, are gone, they soon stabilize and begin their growth into becoming whole, happy young people. After the child's transition, the first to greet the child are usually family members who have gone on to the afterlife before. Pets the child knew are there when the child awakens in the afterlife. Children who were very ill might awaken in a hospital-like environment with other children and animals to play with. Their family come there to greet them and take them to their new home. Other children awaken in familiar surroundings with family members and pets gathered around them. The place where they find themselves is always calming beautiful and loving. Stillborn babies and miscarried or aborted fetuses who were loved by their mother are born in the afterlife and grow to be young adults. There is no distinction between aborted fetuses and those who were stillborn if they were loved by the mother. If your child was aborted, stillborn, or miscarried, you will be greeted by your lovely young adult when you transition decades later. In the communications we've received from parents, it often comes as a shock to those who didn't realize they even had a living child, but it's a wonderful surprise. Many parents find comfort in knowing that a child who has died young is with grandma now or is with Uncle Ted now. If familiar relatives and friends are already there, then the child will grow up in their heavenly home with those people. 
For children who have no one close to them already living in the afterlife, there are beautiful group homes and villages where children grow up at their own pace in an atmosphere of perfect love. The children's homes and villages in the afterlife are off limits to any but those carefully chosen people for whom the perfect rearing of these children is a beautiful and sacred joy. They do miss their families. They don't forget them. But children in the afterlife adjust very quickly to their new lives. They look in on us frequently, especially when the family is grieving. In fact, they communicate to us that when parents are greatly grieving their child, the child will delay their own progress to stay close to the parents. That can sometimes be a burden for the child. They can't move on until they feel their parents are okay. Nothing can replace the love of their earthly parents. But in the childhood areas of the afterlife levels, children will never know pain or fear or any negative emotion. They live immersed in love and joy and make new friends. We can communicate with our children in the afterlife, no matter how long, young they were when they left the earth. The same communication training we make available to people to communicate with loved ones in the afterlife can be used to communicate with children. The link to our free online training is in the description below. Deep grief is a negative energy that can act as a barrier to communication. So as difficult as it may be for parents, it is important that we do what we can to manage our grief so it won't block contacts from our children who have gone before us. It is important that parents be alert for signs. If anything is noticed that might be a sign, even if there's a lot of doubt about it, just say aloud, thank you, I see that. Please do it again. Parents who watch for and acknowledge signs can sometimes be deluged with them. Look for butterflies, dragonflies, cardinals, blue jays, feathers, flowers, pennies, nickels, dimes, anything. Meaningful scents and sounds, songs, synchronicities of any kind. Don't insist on one particular kind of sign, but be open to anything. Just be aware that if you don't respond, your loved ones generally will stop trying after a time. So it is better to respond even if you doubt that something is actually a sign. Once you open a good communication channel, you can enjoy years of communication until you are on the same plane as they are. Consulting a good spiritual medium can help you to reassure you that your child is doing well. Make certain though that you check the references of the medium. The Afterlife Research and Education Institute has sources of lists of qualified mediums at the link on your screen and in the description below. It is a terrible thing when a child dies, but please never for a moment forget that your child is an eternal being. Know for certain you will be together again. This relationship goes on forever. They will grow up in the afterlife in an atmosphere of perfect love. While we can't see them, I am delighted to tell you that they are able to see us and they watch over us for the rest of our lives. So the family is unbroken. Keep mementos, allow yourself to grieve and lovingly talk to your child. Your child will often still be around you. And even a child who died before birth will understand what you're saying. Go on to live your best possible life and make all your children proud of you. Then one day soon, before you know it, you'll be hugging the most beautiful young adult that you can ever possibly imagine.